Hey there everybody, welcome back to the 8th mission of Trapped. Last time we found ourselves breaking into the palace with Chase and assaulted by quite a few intruders. And this time will be pretty much the same, but if you can believe it, this is actually going to be the final mission in the palace. And what is this? It seems like one of the intruders is just a bunch of question marks, but at least we can look at some of the other people we're going to have to slaughter in this update. Johnny is the leader of Catalina's army, nothing too interesting there. Bernhardt is actually a new type of enemy, he's, uh, he's pretty much like a normal, he's like the Axe Knight but with more range. We have actually fought a Thunder Mage before in one of the side missions, but this will be the first one in the normal gameplay. He's He'll be annoying, to say the least. Let's see, we have another archer. Apparently she was duped out of her money and now feels the need to shoot people in the throat to keep them from lying. And we actually have... Well, yeah, this is our second priest. Actually got a much nicer model, I suppose. But without further ado, I think we should go ahead and get this mission started as it's fairly long and it's got a really annoying boss fight. So with Ada's last words, she just kind of, uh, she just pretty much tells us what we already knew that uh, Finnegan was kind of behind it all, along with Catalina. <laughs> So before we start running around the palace, I did want to point out the fact that we are using one of the two secret outfits of the game. This uh, adorable matador looking outfit is actually what the, I think, main character from Deception 3 War. Also there, there's a bit of a graphical issue with the palace. But since this is our final update in the palace, we're going to have to try to cover as many rooms as possible. And this particular room may seem kind of familiar. This was where we started out the game. And this is... Alora's mother's grave. This has a rather odd secret. In that it's also an Iron Maiden. I'm not really sure if... Alora's mother was something of a freak. But let's go ahead and pull out some new and rather fanciful traps. Such as the Devil's Upper. Yeah, there are quite a few of traps that actually manifest large mandibles of some unknown creature. We're going to use that to stop people. Devil's Upper is actually kind of an interesting floor trap, and it's one of the few that will launch guys a single space. But we're going to see if we can't launch one of these guys into our mother's grave. Really though, that is pretty much the only interesting trap out in the graveyard itself, so we're going to make another quick run over to a brand new room. I think we're going to end up seeing about three or four new rooms all total. Not actually sure why the game decided to only have two chapters in the palace, especially considering... Well, what, the first seven or eight were in the mansion. But here we are in the throne room. 
Certainly a, a very odd aesthetic that this royal family has. They seem very, well, torture trap oriented. But there are quite a few interesting traps in here, such as a multi-use chandelier, falling pillars, crush statues, holy anger, bit of a lightning spell there. Also, we have an electrified throne and two flame-spouting dragon statues. I will say that uh, the dragon statues are actually incredibly hard to hit people with. But I do have a bit of a nasty idea in mind. We're going to use the Devil's Upper one more time. Also, we have this big, nice demon foot to stomp on people. Also has the added bonus of actually going two spaces instead of just one. And finally we're going to use another demon foot to set off a trigger. So what the plan basically here is, is to lure someone into that scorched bit of floor right there, set off the holy anger, and then uppercut them into a, well, additional nasty trap. The main problem is that, well, can you guess what uh, the Thunder Mage is immune to? I'll give you a hint, it's thunder. Or lightning, I guess. That would make more sense. Yeah, the lightning mage is definitely a pain in the balls, especially with that homing lightning attack. For right now, I'm kind of wanting to get Bernhardt into that space. But Trident is kind of being a jerk. But I promise it will get set off. At some point. Thankfully he is not immune to the Devil's Uppercut, neither is he immune to crushing statues. Sadly, I probably should have used the Evil Stomp first. It seemed to have ricocheted off the crushing statues. Or maybe I should have used it a little later. But, well, since the only other thing really viable in this room is the, well, Lightning Throne, I... Well, maybe we should just go to another new room. While getting shocked, because I just noticed that my life is incredibly low right now. And that's definitely not a good thing. So you may see all kinds of cool, awesome stuff in this particular room, but we are going to hold off. I'm just going to heal up real quick. We will see this clock room later on in the update. There is pretty much a second part of this particular round. Also want to make sure they are still following me through the floorless hallways. As we head into what will be the final new room, which is very, very odd looking. Yeah, this is actually the king's bedroom with its large sun pendulum and bouncy bed and something called a prancing carousel. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely go with the fact that the king had some very, very odd fetishes. But we're going to use those to our benefit, which is probably not the best thing to say, being his half-naked anime daughter. But we are going to use the Prancing Carousel, mostly because that is an amazingly goofy and horribly devastating trap. It just takes a bit of setting up. Thankfully, the Mega Yo-Yo is the perfect launching trap for that. And it looks like Trident is going to be our victim of choice here, which I certainly don't mind because he has been aggravating me to no end. Shoot you on a knife. 
Yeah, that trap combination is worth a lot of arc, a lot of whirl, and actually does an amazing amount of damage. But just to show something mildly different off for Miranda, we're going to have her have a little ride on the bouncy bed. And we're going to show off one, uh, one new uh, wall trap, the press wall. As you can tell by the red area of effect, it actually has a rather large area that it will affect. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it on a different wall, but I guess my choices are limited. The one drawback of the press wall, as you will see, or kind of see, is this it's incredibly slow, so you kind of have to plan ahead of time, but, well, I'm keeping that all in mind as I uh, set all these traps up. But we're going to pull a little Wallace and Gromit method of getting downstairs. Yeah, that press wall is very damaging. And all we have left is someone named Aaron, who I don't remember being in the intruder list. And he is actually a new type of enemy known as an assassin. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at his information. Assassins are basically just upgraded thieves. They have a bit more life, do a bit more damage. They do uh, some combo attacks, but they're not not they're, they're not too dangerous. They will avoid more traps, but we have ways around that. And mostly just because I really love making men straddle horses, I'm going to use the Prancing Carousel yet again. I really can't get over how stupid of a name that is. But since I have a very specific idea of where he is going to end up, I think we're going to use the Rolling Bomb maybe to do a little bit of extra unnecessary damage. Now what those might not realize, and something I only noticed rather recently, was that I think back in Chapter 5, whenever the guys were trying to sacrifice themselves and get themselves murdered in the mansion purposely, there actually seemed to be a fourth person, or I would say a fifth person, I think we killed four people. Yeah, there was a fifth person in that group that I think was an assassin. I'm not sure why he wasn't in that group, but I don't know. Thins the brakes. But with Aaron taken down, that portion of the chapter is done, but now, well now comes the fucking hard part. フィネが探しておりました。ようやく私の手に姫はご存知でしょうか。青き血の時人と呼ばれし一族を。時人の英知は多民族に多大な恩恵を与え、その将は聖人とされていた。だが彼らの目的はその恩恵に群がる人間の
魔人の力を持つ者を殺せばその力は殺した者に継承されるという<笑>姫あなたの力私がいただきます So say hello to our first boss fight of the game. Finnegan is definitely, definitely a dangerous character. He has this really quick dashing slash attack where he will yell out MATE! Which is... I guess it means wait, but we're definitely not gonna do that. You can also see he has three full bars of health and most enemies have m maybe had one and a quarter, so... Yeah, this is definitely going to be troublesome. Thankfully, though, I've been holding off something very special for him in this clock room. And we'll be seeing that in just a second. First, though, I wanted to give a quick look at all the different mechanisms of death already present in here. First things first, though, I'm going to go ahead and do a little pre-set up for, well, the surprise I have in store for our good friend Finnegan. Devil uppercut there. I'm gonna yep, do a little bit more damage there. And finally, we're gonna need something to set off a switch down back here in the corner. Kinda hard to figure out sometimes where you can and can't put things, but there we go. Yeah, you see there that well his attack will knock us down, making him in perfect position to dash at us again, but thankfully. We are a smart princess. And we, we did need to set that in motion, and that's pretty much the easiest way to do that. So the next thing we want to do is get him, well, basically where that evil stomp is. And you know, that that Dark Illusion would just be kind of okay if it wasn't for the fact that it would release doves at the end. Yeah, that, uh, I do really like that particular Dark Illusion, even if it is the only one in the palace. And, well, well we start to get through one bar of health for Finnegan. And I do want to kind of show off a few more things in this clock tower, or this clock room. The one thing is, well... We have to keep in mind, Angela is still somewhere out there. And being a priestess, she can definitely be a fly in our ointment, as it, were, as it would be. So we're going to see if we can't use some of these dangerous gears. Also, I had troubles realizing where the hell that launched him. But this might not go so well. Finnegan now has someone that will more than likely try to heal him up. And I managed to screw up just a little bit, but that at least shows me where Finnegan will be launched in the future. Even though he was healed up a little bit. Thankfully, he actually will pretty much outrun Angela as long as we continue to keep running. Which means we can easily relaunch him into the trap. While she gets packed in the face by the clock. But I was kind of hoping that would finish him off, but... Well, I got a good idea to make sure it finishes him off this time. Because they can be a very, very dangerous combination. Thankfully, I have a number of big ass feet to smoke them.
Sadly, we are not in the dying mood today, nor do we want to give that poor Irishman any more power than he might already have. And that just, well, that leaves Angela left, and, well, by herself, she is not any kind of danger, so, hmm, you know, I've already pretty much shown all, off all the new traps. I kind of want to launch her into that little cuckoo clock there, but not really sure if it'll work. But either way, let's go ahead and kill her because she loved an evil man. Let's go with that reasoning. Yeah, I'm kind of way overthinking this. I'm, she will be dead very quickly. And with that, we have finally taken out the terror of Finnegan, but that still leaves in question, where's Catalina and where's Herzog? Hime, Gobuji de. Hime ga. お見事です。姫。残るはカタリーナとヘルツオークだけ。古城へ行きましょう。奴らはそこにいる。Well, there you go. We're going to now head off to another brand new area. I still have no idea how Jace figured that out, but well, I'm sure he's bound to be trustworthy, right? But yeah, we buried someone alive with our mother. We shocked a gentleman. Not too bad there. A couple people roasted with hellfire. That's always good. And, you know, even though it won't say it, I will say mentally that, well, we killed Finnegan with a big-ass clock. And that's all that matters to me. So, hopefully you'll join me next time for the next exciting update of Trapped.